What's going on everybody, Gem Mint here back again with another Omnibus video. What was once a series of oversized hardcovers has now been collected into a beautiful Omnibus. Today we're going to take an advanced look at the House of M Omnibus from Marvel Comics. We're going to break down what this collects, how it's mapped out, the construction of the book and more. Before we jump into it, I do got to thank Marvel Comics for sending us this early look. And if you're looking to pick up any Omnibus collected editions or more, you got to hit up Organic Price Books. Use code GEMMINT. It'll save you two bucks every time. With that out the way, let's jump into this. All right, guys, here we go. So the House of M Omnibus, like I mentioned, this is an advanced overview. It releases on January 10th. This is the direct market variant by Asad Ribic. The regular cover is by Oliver Copiel, who did the interiors, uh, along with writer Brian Michael Bendis. This has 1,368 pages, and it retails $125. Here goes your spine here. Nice, thick book as well. You've got Professor X on the bottom. And then on the back here, showing what this collects. So it's the entire eight issue series for House of M, but it has all the tie-ins, Spider-Man House of M one through five, Fantastic Four House of M one through three. You've got Iron Man one through three, then New Thunderbolts 11, Black Panther seven, Uncanny X-Men 462 through 465, Wolverine 33 through 35, Captain America 10, Pulse 10, Cable and Deadpool 17, Incredible Hulk 83 through 87, New X-Men 16 through 19, Exile 69 through 71, Mutopia X 1 through 5, Decimation House of M The Day After, Giant Size Miss Marvel 1, Secrets of the House of M Pulse, House of M Special, House of M Issue 1 Director's Cut, House of M Sketchbook, and then there's some material from Hulk Broken Worlds Book 1. Here we have the inside of the dust jacket, as always, a synopsis on the story on the left, biography on the creators to the right here. All right, and then you have the royal family wraparound cover here. This is a world where Magneto is king, uh, all due to Scarlet Witch and her reality warping powers. So opening up, we got that blood red interior cover. Here's more of what that regular cover looks like, the Oliver Copiel artwork. Here we have the credits for House of M. So again, it's a Marvel event omnibus, so it's collecting the event first, the eight issues, and then it's going into all the tie-ins afterwards and starts off with House of M1. So basically, the story with House of M is that Scarlet Witch is kind of losing it, and she so famously quotes, no more mutants, and gets rid of the majority of the uh, mutant population. So this ends up feeling like a modern-day age of apocalypse in a sense because now the world is transformed into this world where Magneto is king, you have Wolverine that works for his version of S.H.I.E.L.D. and everybody kind of starts to remember what the, what the regular world looks like. So that's I think the best way to describe this. So first we're dealing with a warped reality that Wanda creates. She's distraught over her children and then famously like I mentioned hits us with the line no more mutants and like I said erases the majority of the mutant population. So you have a Marvel event with how does the rest of the Marvel Universe react to this? What is this world like that doesn't have mutants? And they wouldn't have mutants for years to come after this. I always thought it was kind of funny because we ended up with so many mutants from the 90s and early 2000s that this event helped wean that down, almost like a crisis event. So we had an overabundance of mutants and then it uh, weaned them all the way down to this core group. Uh, until we were finally brought back with, what was it, Messiah Complex? With the whole um, hope, the birth of hope. So here we go, going through. So it's a Marvel event. You have multiple artists and writers, especially as you get into the tie-ins here. Here's the Hulk, Broken World Book 1. They give you a synopsis before each issue to let you know where we're at, so that's always helpful. As you can see here, even going into Secrets of the House of M, everything kind of starts with that big flash and what it's like in this world without mutants. And this is where I said it kind of reminds me of uh, Age of Apocalypse, right? You have all of our characters that we know and love, but they have different roles. That Spider-Man booth is currently in open enrollment for their January subscription box. Not only will you get over $100 in value, which includes five comics, store exclusives, and variants, but you'll also get a variant exclusive to this box. For January, it's a quested number one with cover art by Alex Regal. They only made 600 of the regular editions, 100 of the foils, and 50 medals. 
Swing on over to that spidermanbooth.com right now and sign up for their subscription box. The back here has what looks like um, an interview, but it's with the Marvel characters, Doc Ock and Beast. Here we have the uh, Oliver Copiel wraparound variant for the issue one. Some more variants here. This is on the back of the dust jacket. So you get your variants here. Salvador La Roca, beautiful Spider-Man variant. Then we do have a, a script here, Brian Michael Bendis from the director's cut. Oh, I'm sorry for issue one. So we have a, an interview here with Bendis. Some more variants, but some sketches and inks. We got a good amount of that. You can see where WandaVision was inspired by House of M, a distraught Wanda over the non-existence of her kids. I don't want to say death leading to her basically committing genocide on the entire mutant race. I always dug this storyline. So cool to finally get this in an omnibus where you get that main story. You get all the tie ins. You can see how that affected the rest of the Marvel Universe. Let me know what you think about House of M in the comments down below. Appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.